It's Friday, time for another weekly update. This week started high school graduations here in Knox County. Like last year, I will attend all 18 ceremonies. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Thanks to Jim Snowden and his crew at Engineering and Public Works, we were able to hammer out an agreement with Knox County Schools to widen Coward Mill Road, which will allow schools to begin construction on the new Northwest Elementary School. I'm very happy that we were able to help schools make that a reality. With everything going on, please don't forget that Reed City USA is still jetting around the world 20 times in 2020. So far, we've accumulated 406,000 hours read as a community. You can help us reach our goal of 500,000 hours by going to readcityusa.com, download the Beanstack Tracker app, register using your Knox County Library card, and begin logging your reading hours. Before I go this week, I'd like to offer my thoughts on this idea of defunding the police. First of all, I agree with an op-ed that Congressman Burchett recently wrote. Law enforcement is primarily a function of state and local governments, not the federal government. The last thing we need is another federal mandate. So while certain communities might want to pursue a radical idea like defunding law enforcement, that's not going to happen here in Knox County. The Knox County Sheriff's Office is a top flight, professionally run organization, and I am proud of the work they do serving our community. Now to set the record straight, what has happened when police departments have been abolished is that they are simply reorganized, reconstituted, or absorbed into another agency. For instance, folks point to Camden, New Jersey as an example of abolishing the police and the great results that it produced. That's not quite what happened in Camden. While the police department there was defunded, the officers were then rehired as county employees. Part of the problem in Camden was the police union, which ended up protecting bad cops, as well as hiking pay to the point that Camden, a city of about 75,000 people with some of the worst crime rates in the country, only had about 175 police and, during peak crime hours, might only have a dozen of them on patrol. Now, within a couple years of disbanding their police, Camden's police force had actually grown to above 400 officers, which is well above the national average for a city of that size. So I don't believe that defunding the police is a good idea or even a remotely realistic idea. I do believe that we need some sensible reforms to our criminal justice system. Body cams should be mandatory for all patrol as they have been for KCSO officers for over five years. We need to end the use of no-knock warrants, which resulted in Louisville police killing Brianna Taylor and civil asset forfeiture also needs to end. We also need to seriously consider sentencing reforms like mandatory minimum sentences and jail time for low-level, nonviolent drug offenders. I can't stress enough that we should defend our officers to the fullest as they perform their duties. At the same time, we must reform the legal doctrine of qualified immunity to ensure accountability. And I agree with my friend, Senator Rand Paul, who has introduced a bill in the U.S. Senate seeking to stop militarizing law enforcement by limiting the federal transfer of surplus military-grade equipment to state and local law enforcement to defensive equipment only. As policymakers, we should bear in mind that every law we enact must be enforced by some agency. Bad policies can result in unnecessary confrontations between our police and the public potentially putting everyone at risk and causing resentments on both sides. I have the utmost respect for KCSO, Sheriff Spangler, and all his officers. They put their lives on the line every day to make sure Knox Countyans are safe in their homes and on our streets. They deserve our respect and support. These are uncertain and unprecedented times. As people move through periods like this, we often forget the uncertainty and the hardships our ancestors endured. Think about the history of this country. This nation was founded as a result of a war with our own king after an extended period of crisis and turmoil. And it didn't stop right then either. We often forget the British burned down the White House in 1814. 
45 years later, a bloody civil war set family against family and tore the nation apart. A Great Depression, a couple of world wars, and a lot of crises and upheaval, and here we are. To me, the most important thing we can do is to keep pushing forward and keep hope alive. That's what will not only get us through all of this, but will also make our community stronger and better when we emerge. As Gandhi said, what is true of the individual will be tomorrow true of the whole nation if individuals will but refuse to lose heart and hope. Until next Friday, I hope everyone has a great week.